Hello and welcome to the Xenothesis podcast. My name is Richard Acton. This is episode 16, in which we're covering chapter 11 uh, of part 3 nursery of book 1, Dawn of Octavia Butler's Xenogenesis trilogy. I am joined, as always, by my co-host. Michael Glinka. Hi, everyone. Hi, Richard. Hi, Michael. So, um, I think your your predictions were quite spot on this week. Um, Sort of, yes, I guess. <laughs> um, although the story, as always, goes into a more of a more depth than i expected so mm-hmm. my so to all everyone my chapter 11 predictions were lilith was because the last chapter ended up with lilith you know was told to talk to the Kali to get to her get some help and then so she tries to but she gets in, in my prediction i was like she won't get any response and she didn't at the time but later on you know as the chapter goes on things change so mm-hmm. i sort of hit and did not hit the prediction yeah, but I mean, you'd also kind of predicted the whole uh, situation that unfolds later with um, uh, Allison. Oh yeah, the the whole idea with the people, you know, getting so uh, annoyed—not annoyed, maybe. Yeah, so the the pairing up not really working out um, because someone is not you know, happy that not somebody too keen decided not, on yeah. the prospect and yeah. someone else is uh too keen on yeah. the prospect of pairing up yeah yeah but it was sort of when we get to it we can discuss it but it was sort of predictable mm. that the moment things like this happen i mean obviously there'll be people who don't want to participate in this sort of stuff like i mean obviously some people will be how to say keen or like they'll be like oh well actually we are on our own probably nobody else of our families are alive so might as well you know mm. find that some some other person's warmth right but um mm-hmm. but yeah i mean some just, some people will just not be you know, particularly interested in pairing off under these immediate circumstances with yeah, the exactly. options that are presented to them right yeah yeah it's, exactly uh, uh, yeah. so i i feel like it was bound to happen that some low iq idiot was going to be trying to uh you know do something impose silly his will. yeah yeah impose his will and mm. then you know lilith will have to uh, interfere and i need to say mwah, mwah, that was creme de la creme of of the chapter <laughs> yeah that has a certain uh, uh almost not quite cathartic i don't know if that's the right word but yeah one one feels um good about that intervention to be honest i just need <laughs> to say because uh just before we go on because i need to say that i've been playing a game called yakuza zero uh it's basically <laughs> sort of like a game where you're playing as a yakuza member in japan mm-hmm. in 1980s japan it's very realistic by the way just anybody who listens to it wants to play is like feel like japan was and sort of still is because mm-hmm. there's some sort of references to modern japan um you okay. definitely should but like the fight because you're basically running around and fighting bite guys it's very um hilarious and also horrifying at the same time because like you punch them and they fly away and it's, it's like very much <laughs> ragdoll style and sort of uh, i sort of imagine it this like this when this whole situation happened when lilith was fighting in the chapter i imagine it being like that so it's in my mind it was even enhanced more <laughs> we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves yeah. so let's um let's uh, get to the uh, chapter 11 let's summary. Do a summary yeah sure so as in my prediction, unfortunately, Don Kali did not respond to Lilith, and it wasn't surprising though. You know, she had a mission to either organize the humans into a coherent unit, or end up as a scapegoat for our, another person who will do it. Right, so she'll be just a stepping stone to get mm-hmm. the end result. And of course, mm-hmm. Nikanj, Ashjas, and Tichan would try to save her because she was part of her family in case of you know any danger to her life but except for that she was on her own and you know Derek was gone probably put asleep again by the own Kali so and while Peter van uh, Werding who was the the leader let's say of that opposing group to Lilith is not charismatic enough to turn this whole event that you know turning people to his side and trying to shift the blame uh, blame for Derek's disappearance to, onto Lilith. Although he did manage to sort of make Derek into a martyr, a person who at least tried to do something and not like Lilith, just sitting and waiting, right? So... I, I, I suppose there's, there's kind of something to that. I mean, the, like Derek did take some kind of... I mean, it was probably a stupid risk, but he did take some kind of a risk to, you know, 
get into this cupboard and try and figure out what was going on with whomever's holding them captive. So, I mean, it's not completely removed from reality. But, I mean, well, I mean, like, yes. Like any good spin you can put on a situation is, is grounded in some bit of truth. Yeah, but like, you know, at the same time, it's sort of behavior uh, in a way... It's except it was sort of expected from them to do some things like this, right? It was sort of if mm-hmm. there's a cardboard that's being refilled, like it somehow has to be refilled. So obviously the logic there was sound, right? Mm-hmm. And they want to check, but I, uh, but that's where the logic stops, in my opinion, yeah. right? The afterwards, like when we discussed this, like, but the yeah, moment, yeah. like, imagine the Derek comes out and he thinks, like, oh, um, you know, he's gonna surprise whoever is on the other side and not thinking that there might be hundreds of you know thousands of people just waiting to like to grab him and beat the shit out of yeah. him like so it's, a, it's a crazy long shot that anything would come of it but. and he positive out he thought maybe oh i'll see them and then quickly jump out of the cupboard no that's not gonna how it works so mm-hmm. yeah in general i just think that it was just a logic at, it was logical to some certain extent but after that it was just pure idiocy mm. but the thing is, right, this whole behavior, right, the, we know that there are factions now f- being forming between the humans, and we know there's the Peters faction. There was Lilith group, but also there was the neutral part of, you know, neutral p- faction, now, as I would say. Um, mm-hmm. Those people, as they're described, that do not want to be involved in any action. They just are flow- going with the flow, and they're sort of hovering towards Lilith, right? They're, she's sort of, they're sort mm-hmm. of like observing this whole situation, but they don't want to really take part of in anything so yeah it's, it's an interesting phenomenon right because uh, once two factions start forming then being the neutral person ceases to be a particularly viable option right there's all that there, there seems to be a, a human universal right people divide up into groups and not well, picking sides is seen as not really an option well <laughs> i don't agree with that because um there will be some people that in a way well in this scenario right we have Lilith who is claiming, yeah, we're on a sh- mm-hmm. spaceship. Uh, I know they're aliens. Okay, that's fucking crazy. But she's, um, but she can do things, right? So it's not that mm-hmm. crazy. And then there's the other guys who, even though they see that, you know, there's the walls and the plants and there's still st- weird stuff, they're still rejecting this. This is some weird, I don't know, Russian experiment, whatever they can come up with. And then mm-hmm. there's a logical explanation. And they refuse to be the part. Um, but this group is, I would say, not neutral as much, but like more of like, okay, we're not gonna get involved in any of this. Just observe, mm. right? And yeah, like yeah. So the, the the sort of part where we were talking the very pe- in previous episodes that like we are are just observing the situation. It seems to make sense just to uh, sit sit in and observe, but not to get to be quiet, not make bring attention to yourself, just to you know, just to stay on the side and see how it all uh, comes out, right? Yeah. So we were talking about this, and I agree it would uh, be something uh, like Yes, that. yeah. I mean, I, I was kind of framing that as being almost Lilith's side, as it were, with the kind of wait and see, let things develop yeah. group. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can see that another faction being more explicitly that, but just not aligned with, with Lilith particularly. But yeah, I was just kind of um, thinking more broadly about the 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 group dynamics, right? I think it, it, it you have to have some kind of group affiliation, or you know, like pe- people just you know people do that, right? They form groups for mm-hmm. for protection and security and the rest of it. Like, like like prison environments and all that kind of stuff, right? If you're not if you're not in one of the in one of the groups, then you're you're on the outside, and that's usually worse. So I think that that. Uh, I'm not. I don't know enough about the um, what work has been done, kind of in social psychology there about uh, how group formation works. But that, that would definitely be an interesting thing to learn, to know more about, actually. To be honest, does, yeah, I think so. But it, it sort of pattern. this sort of reminds me of like the U.S. political system, where you have only two <laughs> parties mm. that count, and anything in between Although, is just. Uh, I say part of that though is driven by the the voting system. Oh uh, yeah, I can't. There's a. Mm, I can't remember the, the law, but there's some um, description of what happens when you have a first past the post based polling system that will always favour very strongly a a two group system. Okay. Um, and if um, you can kind of get over it to a degree, 
with um, something like you know, ranked choice voting in one flavor or another, single transferable vote, that kind of thing, or other forms of um, representation. It, it's sort of not necessarily intrinsically that division socially, but so that's sort of just driven by an artifact of the electoral system. Mm-hmm. Actually, the, the UK is extremely unusual in that regard in that it has kind of a three-party system, almost the Liberal Democrats kind of vary in their degree of success with the first-past-the-post polling system. That's, it, it almost never happens. Uh, mm-hmm. It's extremely difficult to have an, a stable, um, more than two-party system without first-past-the-post, with, with first-past-the-post. Yeah, right, that's so. the thing, like... Mm-hmm. but. Anyway, I just just remind me that I don't want to go into politics too much because this is not really a good time, especially. Uh, yes, uh, we, we're recording. Uh, what is it? First uh, of November, two days before. Yeah, yeah the so U.S. presidential election in twenty twenty. Yeah, so, um, so I just don't want to say go anywhere into <laughs> that kind of warmth. So it just reminded me of that sort of like split. So um, um yeah. But anyway, let's go back to the chapter, I guess. Let's uh, yeah, ignore real world politics. Yeah, let's, let's do ignore some the real world. We have more important uh, alien politics here to to deal with. Um, Much better than the real. <laughs> so Lilith decided to continue as in the previous chapter that she is going to awaken more people, ten more people, um, but this time it was only her group that would take care of them and talk to them, whereas Peter's people were made to look like troublemakers who were just you know on the side just causing Mm. problems so yeah so there's a little section here where she was kind of in her room reading over the the dossiers on the the people um who she was you know contemplating waking up trying to get new um uh, yeah people people who would be likely to align with her um but no it, it occurred to me that it seems like this would be a kind of a source of suspicion right she's got these dossiers on everyone (laughs) <laughs> and I think this, yes, I feel like people would be like, "What are all these papers?" What, what you know, we're demanding to see them and, and that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm wondering if I don't think we're told explicitly whether or not she's like managed to keep them sort of concealed inside. No, a she concealed them the at the very or... beginning when she, um, before she awakened anybody. Um, hmm. There was a in her room when she made her room. She made a yeah. little compartment for her um, for those documents. Oh, yeah, yeah. She mm. did. So she, she did particularly mm. hide those. Even again, mm. uh, uh, um, she hid them even from Joseph, um, mm. just so that you know she's only uh, want to see those uh, those dossiers, and that's it. Although th- yeah. that's the fact that you know she uses the pictures from the dossiers to find the people with her hands mm. so you know obviously there she has to have them somehow on hand but obviously none of i don't think anybody has seen them yet yeah because i mean she, she's had like groups of her kind of followers in her in her room and um and i think it, it, it seems like it's a, a little bit of a chore to actually like completely close her space off from the rest of it because she's got to sort of like grow a section of wall in almost that she can't sort of create and opening closing but i think door she does such. though so, like i think she does close yeah. the door it's not, well the wall mm. from to, to separate herself i think she does do that on occasion but it is um it, it seems like it's a slightly slow process right because she's got to just sort of grow in a section of door mm. um, but i think so uh, the way i wasn't she sure designed... whether or not she had decided to like completely maintain the secrecy of the dossiers or if anyone might have happened to have seen them but apparently yeah i mean she could have done she could have done which would probably be the sensible thing to do no i'm pretty sure she did because i mean yeah mm. it, it's probably not good idea for people to see they have uh she has information on everybody because that would make her look like mm. a spike 100 percent. so yeah yeah but like i the way she would describe when she was building those rooms for people is that um she covered the hit the door to each room in a way that give people privacy and pr- uh, protect mm. people from being um uh, not spied on upon, but like uh, what's the word? Um, picked upon yeah. on or yeah, like p- picking Tom type. Yeah, thing. sort of behavior. Yeah. So to prevent that happening, so uh, I think mm. I imagine it's sort of being like a sort of a curved curved sort of wall, so that you know you have yeah. to walk in and you have to like sort of walk out again, like to to pick you to be very difficult because your face would be mm. very visible like, immediately. Yeah, I imagine it was just kind of a. Uh, like a little zigzag structure that would yes, mean that you could yes. actually see into the main body of the room standing outside it from any particular angle but it yeah. doesn't actually stop someone you know walking in yeah um so 
if she wanted to be sure that no one would walk in on her reading the files, she'd have to, you know, like close the wall. Yeah, I guess so. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure that, that that would probably happen. What uh, mm-hmm. in her circumstances? Yeah. But yeah, but this sort of her reading the during the during the dossiers, that's where the you know trouble begins. You know, mm. uh, one of the women, as you mentioned earlier, Alison Ziegler, uh, had not yet paired up. Uh, but she chooses Lilith's side over Peter's, and this is, you know, this sort of references back to what we've discussed. You know, that Lilith uh, started awakening more fifty-fifty, sort of like male to female mm-hmm. ratio of people, and obviously, you know, as much, I guess, you no, know, initially, well, although Lilith had the idea of not awake awakening more women to cause less problems. Now mm. she's doing 50 50 because I don't know, there's no really this description of why she would do it or if she actually is doing it. But like the fact is that there probably is now more balanced uh, ratio. It does seem to be. Um, it leads to the problems, right? Like the, the actual problem, you know, somebody doesn't want to pair up because, you know, they don't feel like it, right? And they want to survive mm-hmm. instead of, you know. So it's it was obviously going to lead up. And at the same time, treating people like objects, you know, thing like, oh, if I make more females, then uh, at least the males are not going to cause problems. It's like, mm. uh, Yeah, yeah. As I, like we said last time, the, the imbalance may create um, sort of, uh, I don't know, unrest among the the males but that you know it doesn't the, the fundamental sort of individual liberties right the, there's no reason for the the men to have the expectation that anyone would exactly pair up them. there's exactly. no reason for the woman to to feel as though they should uh, be or be obliged in some fashion to pair up with some you know idiot see so and uh, this is and this is where it actually you know obviously a logical and well a uh, grown person like you know you and me although I don't know if I'm an adult yet but you've <laughs> described it in a way that you know that should happen in normal society but here we have a bunch of idiots trying to do exactly opposite so uh, you know one of the men yeah. Gregory Sebastis not happy that you know that actually this particular woman that he's interested in is not pairing up so he's trying to do drug you know he's going to have a go at he's trying to have a go at her and you know, trying mm. to drag her into his room it's like in normal society this is you know this uh, in society it shouldn't be acceptable and it's not acceptable so indeed but you know this whole idea, this whole situation, you know, leads to, you know, Alison shouting Lilith's name. And then, um, and when as she comes out, you know, she sees two men holding a struggling woman between them. This is as the book describes. The trio was prevented from reaching any of the bedrooms by Lilith's people who stood blocking the way. And Lilith's people were prevented from reaching the trio by several of Peter's people. So it's mm. like uh, Lilith's group was like um was uh protecting the you know stopping them from getting to bedrooms then there's the some random Mm. people in between and then there's the peter's group right as Mm. imagine so as the book this uh, this, uh, describes a deadly standoff and this is this is Mm. what like no as you said what the hell is she is she saving herself for uh jean was demanding it's her duty to get together with someone there aren't that many of us left it's like what is Go, you know, what, I made a comment here. What on earth was going through the heads of those troglodytes? Like, mm-hmm. why is she saving her? Like, because she's a human being, she doesn't have to pair up with anyone. Like, seriously? Mm-hmm. Yep. And you know, she gets to choose if, if, and with whom, right? Rather than this uh, Gregory chap who seems to have taken it on himself to decide for her. A nice uh, guy. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, for me, it's just from my head, it's like, okay, so basically this is the Paul Titus version 2.0 happening again. Yep. And, you know. Although these people have less of an excuse than him. Exactly. Um, exactly. Not that he had much of one, but, uh, you know, he had kind of I mean, he... slightly more psychologically understandable reasons for not behaving as you know, a sensible adult human should. But uh, Because yeah, he have, only. Uh, he ne- when he was awakened, he was a kid, and he never had the actual, yeah. you know, yeah. as he was in his early teens, raised entirely by aliens, yeah, and yeah, in a, in a context of considerable coercion, so you know, mirroring the behavior that you see. But uh, these people have, uh, okay, they've been in solitary confinement for a little bit, but uh, yeah, they were full-grown adults 
who should have known better. Yeah. By the time they actually got work up, they're working up here. So yeah. this is where Allison goes. It's my duty to find out where I am and how to get free. Maybe you want to give whoever is holding us prisoner a human baby to fool around with, but I don't. And this is Kurt, like the policeman, right? Goes, weep her off, Bilal, mm. drowning her out. One man, one woman. Nobody has the right to hold you. It's, uh, has the right to hold you. It just causes trouble. It's like, really? A previous policeman, like, acting like this to, to, uh, I mean, like, mm. mate, honestly, this is, I feel like against any of your, um, original sort of, uh, I don't know, rules or uh, not the rules, but like mm. his or like his own standing, who he was. I mean, you know, mm. he was a man of a person. He was a person who was supposed to protect other people, and he's now ask, mm. acting like a basically, a, you know, a caveman. It's like seriously. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it seems it's odd to be honest, because I mean, like a huge proportion of what the sort of things that police get called out on are. Uh, you know, domestic violence type cases. Yeah. So you know, you, you'd think you'd have the opportunity to to learn from the example of how not to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like it feels to me like everybody's reverting into a complete madness, like complete mm. primordial um, behaviors are just primal behaviors are just coming back to us. It's like, I mean, I guess I get understandable, but at the same time, it's still not acceptable considering that. We come up from a society, you know, from a society that's pretty well developed, and I mean, I, I at mm. least hope that I, I can still be a bit positive about society, our society, not mm. going reverting back that much. But then again, I've mm. watched and played too many dystopian style of games. <laughs> and I mean, I, I suppose we we do have the you know the these were all people who survived a little while after the apocalypse, right? Yeah. So that well, the you know the nuclear war that kind of. And have destroyed most of humanity, so they had they have some experience of living in that sort of post apocalyptic environment where things would probably have gone a bit more feudal mm. um, than was conventionally the case in the twenty first century. Well, the end of the twentieth in this case, but yeah, it's uh, disappointing that we have such a backslide. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, I do. I do, I'm a bit disappointed with at least him. Like the rest of them, I really don't care. But him in particular, mm. I was expecting to be one of the little, you no know, tight group that you no know, at least keeps a track of people trying not to stir trouble. You know, keeping everybody in. A... Yeah, and uh, although that's what he did seem to have a, uh, he seemed to have a sort of somewhat conventional attitude. You know, he was. Uh, uh, I mean, in, in in a good way for the most part. When it was initially the case, right? Because he was he was defending a, a bunch of children. Yes. Um, and then, well, we, we don't know anything about whether or not he had any uh, female partners involved in that process. But he seemed to be, you know, like looking out for a bunch of kids, which is you know laudable and a good thing to have been done. But uh, yeah, he uh, seems to have gone. I think even though too uh, far. what's her name that that lady who was completely useless. Ah uh, yes. Um, uh, who, what was her name? It starts with C. I remember. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so it, she was supposed to Lily walk her up in purpose so that Kurt can protect her and take care mm-hmm. of her. And I guess you know maybe she is still with Kurt. But in the same time, mm-hmm. it's just it's a bit you know I'm disappointed with his attitude. I would say. Yes. But let's go back. So the argument heats up to the point where basically Allison hits Gregory because he's you know he's trying to pull her and then um him as being a gentleman he was he hits her back causing a blood stream of blood running from her nails <laughs> and this is the point where Lily finally reaches them and orders them to stop startling the group around her basically she shouted so loud that people were like wow and but the group around Allison was too distracted to hear her and this is the enter the hawk moment <laughs> Um, first of all, point one, the two people trying to stop Lilith to, in her tracks by holding her arms get thrown aside like ragdolls, basically. Then Peter yep. tries to hit her, gets his arm caught, squeezed, twisted, breaking it in several, getting a multiple side fracture, and then mm. being commented, piece of garbage, not a human, by Lilith. And then he gets thrown mm. at a wall. <laughs> Yeah, and then Gregory and Kurt try to attack Lilith without realizing, you know, like they didn't even register what happened, and Kurt gets knocked out in one hit uh, to his stomach, and then Gregory mm. trying—I I sort of imagine he's trying to lunge at her, and she just 
kicks him in the face and he just does a backflip uh basically <laughs> and just falls unconscious and this is just this is how uh five people get ta- yeah, get beaten cool. up while Lilith gets you know ended up untouched it's just like and just sort of like bang 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 quick succession pretty much down pretty yeah. much just like you know dominance was asserted mission accomplished and then just you can hear mm. peter in the background crying my arm oh god my arm you know it's just mm. it, it's just for me it was like mwah, creme de la creme of the of the of this uh chapter it's just like i love mm. this action it was just like oh yeah i mean uh- I I got a a little bit concerned that Lilith might you know like accidentally hurt someone more than she was intending to, but but at the same time I wasn't overly concerned. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, when she um uh, kicked Kurt in the face, it, the book I think described it as some cracked the cracks on. I thought he might have accidentally cracked his neck or something like skull yeah. when she ki- like hit him. So it's mm. just sort of uh, Lilith's strength. Yeah, it's. You can tell that Onkali mm. did a great job enhancing her physical strength. Mm-hmm. So, and this is where Lilith goes, there will be no rape here, she says in the, evenly. Then she raised her voice, nobody here is a property, nobody here has the right to use, to the use of anybody else's body. There will be no back to the Stone Age caveman bullshit. She let her voice drop to normal. We stay human. We treat each other like people and we get through this like people. Anyone who wants to be something less will have his chance in the forest. There'll be plenty of room for him to run away and play at being an ape. So mm-hmm. it's it just shows like, you know, this is the problem with the whole thing with this room and non Kali. Like they say this is the best way for the humans to get used to the alienness, but it's not really yeah. not. Like you know, it's. But it certainly doesn't seem like it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I haven't actually given a detailed thought to what might be a better alternative, but. Um, Neither did I. But yeah, I still but, think uh, that if Don Kali did show themselves up now, that would be a hmm. great point of like, okay, she was not bullshitting. This is what is happening. We hmm. need to uh really work together, and the trade is real. So let's move. Yeah, on. just to pro- provide a bit more. A confidence that there is in fact a you know the, a real alien species that are, that are the ones doing this yeah yeah but i mean the, in the same the time in the same time she did beat up just five men just like that by literally throwing mm. them around like dolls so mm. at this point it's like is she actual human <laughs> which is actually a good question because it does actually being asked later on but like mm. it does mm. put a question like okay this is weird Right. Yeah, I, I mean, like Bill and Carly said, right? It's uh, we've given you kind of the 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 latent strength of your your recent um, ancestors. Uh, ancestors, yeah. right? So if you were, um, and uh, if you pay attention to the strength of like you know the, the you um, gorillas and the orangs and the the chimpanzees, it's quite considerable. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, if you're hanging from no. the trees all the time for chimpanzees mm. and or orangutans, then you have the strength. Yeah. And I mean, gorillas, you can tell like this. This mm. thing could literally, uh, just general, mm. it's fucking horrifying. I mean, like, I mean, orangutans, they look like a kind of a, a loose sack, right? They're not even like <laughs> particularly muscly, right? They're, they're, they're like, you know, they're kind of, they're really like floppy looking, right? But the. Our, the most intelligent, mm. our cousins we have, the orangutans, and they're being described as loose sacks. Mwah, brilliant. Yeah, I mean, if, if you look at them, though, right, you know, they've, they do. they've they got, really do. they don't look like, you're not like, you know, muscular and sort of ripped looking, right? They're quite, you know, loose. Yes. But at the same time, you know, I, I think it was... Uh, they look like old people, my, basically. Maybe my, my great uncle or so. Someone told me a story once about um, uh, they assembled like a... Um, a frame for an orangutan enclosure mm-hmm. and they you know bolted together a bunch of pieces with like a you know pneumatic bolt tightening thing you know just to screw all the bits together and like they came back the next day and the orangs had undone all the nuts by hand so you know they, they've they've tightened these things up and uh, with like a big pneumatic uh bolt tightening you know thing yeah and the orangs have just got in there with their fingers and just mm, mm, undone it <laughs> No, no concern. Yeah, it's it's um, really crazy, like how yeah, strong these yeah. animals are. Very strong, and they do look like old men, basically, just like you know, <laughs> yeah. floppy belly and everything, and still, mm-hmm. it's very crazy. Very strong. Very crazy. 
So plausible. Yeah, it's plausible. It's very plausible. It's happening. So Lilith, mm-hmm. after you know the saying what she said, is still pumping adrenaline. Adrenaline, you know, starts going back to her room, but like gets surprised by Joseph who approaches her because um, she you know he's still jumping, right? She jumps up a bit, but he then asks her to go and ask mm-hmm. Onkari to help those idiots um, because he thinks mm-hmm. that they might have been hurt a bit too much, and then she. Lilith goes on the side and you know quietly asks in non Kali language, yeah, and she gets us a response, you know. Um, but the mm. Kali the response is nothing that they're not so broken and they need a lesson, right? They will be healed eventually once they get the lesson in their mind. And she, Lilith mm. then is surprised, recognizes that it's in fact Ahjas that's talking to her. But when Lilith says that it's so good to hear her, um, she gets no response back. Right? It's, it's, uh, yeah, it seems like they're uh, still being very limited yeah. in their permission to talk. But, uh, it's a bit... Yeah, so, so it's an interesting decision from the Owen Carly. They, they decided to speak and everyone hears that. And it's that disembodied voice from the ceiling again. But um, it's uh, uh, you know, the, the thing is, you know, the, these guys on the floor, eh, they're fine. Go with a broken arm. We'll we'll deal with it yeah, eventually, yeah. but for now, let him suffer. Exactly. To be <laughs> honest, it's a lesson. great lesson for him. To be honest, to uh, mm. not to behave like that. Mm. It's 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 a it's a weird thing, but so it's basically happens in room between everyone. So and this is where like you no, know, the story repeats like you know, uh, Lilith conveys everything to her team, but then Gabriel goes, "I thought they wouldn't talk to you." And of course, Lilith tells him that, you know, don't Kali do what they want. Mm. And Gabriel realizes yeah. that she knew that one. Is like, uh, he goes, I thought so. Your tone and the way you looked when you talked to her, you relaxed more. You seemed almost wistful. And Lilith goes, she knows I never wanted this mm. job. And Gabriel asks, was, was she a friend? And it goes, as much as it's possible to be friends with someone of totally different species. She gave a humorless uh, laugh. It's hard enough for human beings to be friends with each other, you know. It's but in Lilith's mm. mind, it's we know that it, it the same thoughts just go round and round. Like she thinks of them as friends, but what is Lilith really to them? A tool, a pleasurable perversion, as she describes it in her mind, an accepted member of a household, accepted as what? Like mm. this is this. And to be honest, we don't know the answer to this, right? Yeah, yeah, we're not sure kind of to what degree Lilith is in any way a kind of a respected as an autonomous individual that doesn't seem to be the case from what they've given but she seems not to quite be like a house pet but it it seems like it's maybe somewhere in the middle right it's not quite uh not quite up to the level of full personhood. I still don't get this whole Onkali human relationship because, you know, Paul Titus mm. and then Japanese fellow who, who died, um, whatever his name was, um, he, they all sort of stayed with Don Kali and Don Kali saying like, oh, this is our family, you know, everything. But like, how much, like, how, you know, and then of course she took care of, uh, took care of Nikanj when he was going through his metamorphosis, mm-hmm. and it's all of that you know combined and this whole idea. So there seems to be some like family relation, but in the same time it's still unclear exactly what the Onkalis uh, think. Be really nice if yeah. there was a chapter. I mean, just like to to analogize to another situation, right? Like humans think of dogs as part of the family. True. Right. You know, and you know the the dogs will be. You know, will like sit by the bed and act as you know comfort when humans are sick and that kind of stuff, right? So that, but at the same time, the humans you know condescend to the dogs, right? Because they're less than. Um, so is 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 the dynamic more like that of a a pet than it is of another member of the Good the family in a full sense? It's yeah, and because Lilith is, you know, an intelligent, sentient entity, a human, she's kind of aware of and questioning the possibility that she's the dog in this situation. No, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's a good point because mm. I, um, yeah, I, I see the point. But it'd be nice if there was a chapter from the Onkali perspective, just one, just to see what, mm. how, how they reason and how what goes through their minds, just to understand. But I think, I think that's a kind of a deliberate choice right it leaves it ambiguous yeah. it leaves us stuck in in lilith's um perspective there we're like we, we can't know what they really think of that they have we only get from them what they're willing to tell us 
and we can only believe as much of that as we and deduce from what they say to her yeah 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 so Mm. the chapter ends sort of the conversation of lilith and the rest is like take you know, brings back Lilith away from her thoughts, asking why is she so strong, to which Lilith admits what Don Kali did to her, you know, with the strength, the speed, the regeneration. And then, but then, you know, Lilith goes, where's Alison? And then asking if she's fine. But then at the end of the chapter, Alison drops the bomb question, are you a human? Right? You know, are you actual human? And the chapter ends with Lilith saying, you know, this would be so goddamn easier if I weren't a human. Think about it. If I were a human, mm. why the hell would I care whether you got raped or not? Uh, and then, you know, Liv says at the end, I'm going to awaken 10 more people tomorrow, and the chapter ends. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's a eventful chapter, right? All the uh, the action. Oh, yeah. Uh, Action-packed. Everything sort of finally know. kicks off. But it's it's just leads... I think it leads um to the idea that there's going to be more trouble hop, hop, coming. So maybe let's mm. go to the chapter to our prediction now, then maybe expand on this uh, thought. So sure. I think there's gonna be in the chapter twelve there's gonna be more problem because either Peter, who will finally recover, right, or someone in second in command like Kurt, will just come in and stirring mm. up more st- uh, problems, and it'll be you know after what happened to Peter and the rest, and finally when you know Lilith awakens the ten people, right. There's gonna be something that's gonna happen that basically all the forty people are being awakened. That you no, know, either there's something's gonna just happen before Don Kali come in and show themselves, or just when Don Kali appear. That there's gonna be some sort of problem mm. that the group, the anti Lilith group, will just do something that might actually be you know cause actually Lilith being in danger. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I don't know why. I don't. I mean, I don't know mm. what, but like, um, but I feel like this is where at least like you know, Lilith beats up five men. Uh, yeah. And so I think it's 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 sort of it's coming to a head, right? When when the next ten people are woken up, the something will occur that means the Owen Kali intervene. Yeah. And basically, you know, Lilith being the final boss of the of the of this place, basically mm. everybody's mm. going to try to jump on her or something. And then mm-hmm. suddenly the Onkali be like, okay, you know, this experiment is probably not working that well uh, or something. And they will have to okay. be like um, intervening or something. Do you think that they actually expect that um, a kind of equilibrium state, as it were, will be reached in this group of humans, that they will kind of be under Lilith or someone no, else? Or is point, that just a... At this point, what? it's too obvious that it's not going to happen because... There is too much polarity between the groups. Um, hmm. There's, you know, Nikanj keeps telling her, "Oh, you know, you should be leading those people. Leading, leading what? Where? To do what? Like, I mean, those people are just doing nothing for the last, I don't know, several weeks, let's say, hmm. and there's nothing yeah, for no them goal. to do. They're getting restless. They're getting annoyed. They're trying to question. They're questioning everything, which is reasonable because you should be questioning everything, mm-hmm. but." Yep. The way that things are turning, it's basically like just reverting. The only thing they have, the only entertainment they have is sex. Okay, let's be honest. Like this is medieval type the ty- uh, type of entertainment. You know uh, why there are so many people having children? Well, obviously, what else would you have to do when you ha- you know there's no electricity, nothing else. The sun goes down at five p.m. in the evening in the winter. What else do you have? Just banging each other as the minds out. Like this is the only entertainment you have mm. in your life. Mm-hmm. Except for work, you know, you know, work and that, you know, that why, why else do you have, you know, like, so it's the same here. This is the reversion of like the society into this like primal, um, hmm. yeah. feelings. Well, I suppose it, in more ways because there's no um like basic needs are catered for, right? You don't have to actually go. And yes, that's the thing. Work like, in order if, to get fed and the rest if of it, people yeah. have you know the basic needs like the shelter, food, sleep, hmm. covered then there's the other, yep. like, the higher level, you know, necessities to be covered, right? So this is going to be yep. things like self-development and stuff like that. So, obviously, mm. but because they have... Maslow's not, hierarchy of needs. Yeah, so as there's nothing to be done or uh, in that case, then obviously people are like, okay, we are giving everything. What are we supposed to do? We have nothing, no entertainment, no anything. Like, no, people can exercise 
24-7 if you want in the room, and yet there's still, you know, to, there's, a, mm-hmm. there's a certain limit to people who can do repeat the same thing over and over again, right? So Yeah, boredom is a surprisingly powerful um, force for producing unrest. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, like, you know, just all those... Victorian style of novellas where all of those ladies were looking through the window and up, you know, uh, observing the nature and everything, and the days were passing. Just their, you know, their life was like this, right? Because they were sheltered girls, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, at at least there yeah, was some. And they were bored out of their skulls, so they got involved in all kinds of scheming. Yeah, well, obviously <laughs> there was a lot of scheming and, and all of that stuff yeah. behavior, but like at least yeah. there was some sort of still behave, mm-hmm. you know, some type of entertainment. But in this case, yep. like you literally mm-hmm. have nothing. You're like literally closed in the cell, mm-hmm. and this is why the reason why I guess you know prisoners are kept usually separated, you no, know, because it's if you get people in, the, you know. Um, in the groups like this, you end up with like the uh, the prisoners in Mexico, where you basically have gangs uh, of being, you know, forming and people being terrorized. Duh! Mm-hmm. This is what's happening here. Yeah, that's yeah. It's the, very much like what happens in any other kind of prison environment, right? You get the the groups and the conflict between those groups. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I feel there's going to be really something bad happening next. Like, I mean, we have three more chapters in the nursery because there's 15 chapters in the part three. So I feel like hmm. this is this is where... It, One of which is very short. Yeah. So I feel like yeah. we're going to have, you know, the next... And then the next chapter is called... Part is called training, if I remember correctly. Uh, the next section, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. this is where I know something is going to happen. And they're going to be st- finally move on to the jungle thing, right? This, this scenario. Yep. And I'm sure this is what's going to continue the civil war that I mentioned chapters, uh, episodes, episodes before that, you know, people will finally realize mm-hmm. it. But then either they can continue being together or fighting against each other. So this is where it's going to lead. Yep. So you think the um, what Lilith said about um, anyone who has... Uh, you know, wants to be something less will have the chance to do so in the forest and play it being apes. Yep. That, that will uh, 100%. come to pass. There'll be the the groups trying to hold on to some semblance of civilization and the... Uh, not so much. It's going to be like... What's the name of the book? Oh, not of Mice of Men. Um, the other lecture book that is being taught um, about the group of boys that uh, end up... Um, Oh yes, uh, on um, an island. Uh, oh, what's the name of the book? Yeah, that, that, uh, hmm, yeah, I would have known it, but now you've like brought it to mind. I can't get the name. <laughs> you know that thing we, uh, yeah, with with Piggy and the Con. Yes, and, yes, um, yes. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Who knows? It'll come yeah. back eventually. People will get it from this. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty uh, people will get yeah. this, but um, mm-hmm. but I just Google it. Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies. That's it. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So yeah. it's it's going to be uh, like that. Basically, yeah. it's going to be just a group of boys that were taken out from society and suddenly form a groups, and then suddenly you know something really bad happens, and then suddenly when the society goes back to them, they all just go back to normal as if never nothing ever happened. <laughs> this is uh, always for me. Mm. This was always the most bizarre part of this book that, like those boys. They literally ended up basically kill- killing one of them or more. If I, mm. I don't remember the book well anymore, but basically, and then when the ship finds them uh, again, they just like, oh, you know, happened. So nothing, you know, yeah, this back. just going back to the mm. society and never nothing ever happens. Like, really? Like this is this is for me. This <laughs> well, no, not really, because it's fiction. But <laughs> yeah, I know, but like, it just it just makes me feel like what. Hmm. so yeah this is definitely hmm. what's gonna happen there's gonna be the civil war between them there's gonna be the apes led by peter or whoever else is gonna take over uh i guess peter maybe have too much trauma after being beaten up like a little <laughs> bo- a little doll and hmm. then basically um they're gonna be taken to the forest and then uh either start with lilith training them and then they're gonna get some um basic training and then they're gonna separate and obviously mm. after the separate there's gonna be war <laughs> and again it's like like the lord of the flies yeah. and then finally at the end when they're all gonna meet up so they're gonna be taken to the earth at the very end mm-hmm. 
Okay. Just uh, so um, uh, it's, it's Peter's arm that's broken. Yes. Right? Yeah. So he uh, and the Iron Carly said he'll be okay for a bit, but we're going to take care of that. What exactly do you think that might mean? I guess I mean because the Iron Carly can control the whole room. I guess they're gonna mm. heal him by I don't know like because I just said that like they can sense it through the flaws and everything. They're already mm. contact you know uh, contacting them in a way, just like checking up things. Mm. So I guess it's what's gonna happen is like he'll have his broken arm for several days to you know to live with the pain and the fear of Lilith and her Hulk mm-hmm. strength, and then basically they will slowly, slowly you know stimulate the arm when he is asleep to uh through the floor whatever or the bed whatever wherever mm. he sleeps just to um so it heals faster yeah so you think that might uh how you think he's going to feel about the fact that his arm is I don't like know. magically depends, healing depends on how, <laughs> i mean depends on how quickly they do it if it's over time if it heals mm. like you know over a week time He'll be like, mm. oh, okay, that's pretty weird, but you know. But if they heal it like almost, you know, after in one day, like he goes to sleep and wakes up without the broken arm, that would really freak him out. Like, they'll be like, well, what the hell? I had the broken arm. I was in so much pain, and suddenly there's no pain mm. at all. Like, what is going on? Yeah, and that, uh, uh, I wonder if that might have the power to um, make him think twice about going against you. Yeah, it, it might sway him, but mm. I don't know if it's going to sway other people. Hmm. I had one little point I wanted to raise uh-huh. about um, just the general. Uh, the last couple of chapters, I kind of noticed this in that um, when there's narration going on, quite a lot of time can pass. Yeah, but they'll be kind of slipped back into real time, as especially it were, with, when Lilith's um, dialogue. Yeah, and Lilith's sort of thoughts. Yeah, like I've noticed mm-hmm. the same thing that when she thinks about or does think, like it's all really real time. Yeah, we get that kind of. Uh, first person from Lilith's perspective thing and then it's, it's very much um, in the moment right uh, yeah but just uh, I think it, it works pretty well but uh, I, I'm not really sure what I wanted to say about it other than just to note that it, it is a, a device that seems to be being used here. Well I think um, it's sometimes a bit confusing though because it's um, hmm. we know that she awakens like 10 people one day and then 10 people another day right hmm. but sometimes it feels hmm. like a week or so passed right and people are like that because hmm. the tensions are rising so quickly that it feels hmm. like um, a week has been compressed in one day or something or vice versa yeah yeah it can be a bit a bit of a jarring change of pace sometimes because you, you go from quite a large jump of time and then you're right back in the real time. Mm. It's, uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I find it sometimes a bit confusing in a way that like it's mm. it's I'm not entirely certain how much time has already passed since Lilith first was uh, put in that room and mm. the chapter sixteen uh, sorry uh, eleven we just described in episode sixteen sorry um, mm. we just you know talked about so it's it's a bit confusing whether it's been few weeks or is it just one week that literally just passed or something you know like because if it's just one week and people yeah, are already you... freaking out like this much like oh my god like i would not want to awaken anybody more i'd be like nope <laughs> i'm not doing this anymore yeah. if it's one week and people are behaving like this this is not a good sign mm. yeah it, it does have a it makes it a little bit difficult to perceive how much time has passed because of that um it, it, because you get you know a couple of short sentences can be quite a big chunk of time, and then the next several sentences are like a very you know small few seconds of conversation. Yep. Um, so you do get that slightly um, sort of a mismatch in the cues for how how much time has elapsed. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, but yeah, yeah, mm. and then yeah, I don't. We never really could have discussed in depth kind of the big time skip that occurred with like the. Was it like a year or so between when? Oh yeah, when we she was training, kind of when she was training in the jungle. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And that no, I, a lot of people don't like big time skips, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was um, the whole thing of what happened with her and the kind of uh, um, Nick Ange's family unit. You know, uh, we get a little bit of her kind of experiences there from the callbacks for it, from what happens with them. Um, Joseph. With Joe. Yeah. That's the only yeah. time, to be honest, we were actually told that what she was experiencing during the time when she talks about the pleasure thing 
when they were like modifying mm. her and he was exper and Nikandra was experimenting. And then, you mm. know, that the very beginning of the part three where we are told about the whole training and um um in the jungle and as well the observatory, you know, with the gas bubble just, you know, yeah, moving yeah. up and down and stuff like that. So mm. we are told we have to sort of deduce what how uh, what happened by just those pieces of information that were like just sort yeah. of thrown in casually. Mm, it leaves us with a little bit of sort of uh, uncertainty, a bit of retrospective suspense where we're not we were sort of getting tidbits of what occurred during that time without really having experienced it uh, from Lilith's perspective. But it feels to me that but it does... Lilith didn't have time to relax, right? No. Uh, well, Be because mm. like in the in the first place, it was like the situation with Paul Titus and Kaguya just you know um, pushing her to study more and more, and then getting mm. all you know modified by Nikanj, and then she started you know learning the mm. language and everything, right? And that's that's sort of like that was the period when she was with Chitaya and you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and then Nikanj was still young, right? So that was sort of the part yeah. where she was undergoing the training and getting used to the other on Kali. Then after mm. Nikanj went through underwent the metamorphosis and where they separated, you know, the family, you know, uh they went uh, Liv went to live with Nikanj. Um mm. they basically went back to um uh they jumped into the training in the jungle. So it's like that there wasn't mm -hmm. really an except maybe for this but but then again the country did modify Although, her, so, and that, that whole pleasure thing. Yeah, starts, there's sort so. of further modification, and then there's that experience of pleasure, and sometimes with Nikanj's partners, you know, Hajus and Dishan, and there's the fact in this chapter that she, she, you know, she regards Ahajus as a friend, yeah. and feels like wistful, according to um, Gabriel's perceptions of her. Uh, he's quite perceptive about that, by the way. Just managed to pick up on that about her body language while she's conversing in an alien language so um, yeah it's it's it shows. feels a bit um weird i would say we don't have any of that there's not enough information to ju like how much time has passed between going to the jungle we know it was a year mm. she spent in the jungle we know we don't mm. know how much time after spending that whole year in the jungle it took it to be moved to the cell we just know that she mm. went to the observatory at some point but there are some gaps in between there. Do we even know whether or not um, Nikanj and Arjus and Deshaun were actually with her at all while she was in this jungle I don't think I don't we are think we told. Know. I know she was trained, yeah. so there must have been someone yeah. to um, teach her something, Do but like, except yeah. for that, nothing else. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So there's that whole sort of uh, big empty bit of time that does create a bit of uncertainty uh, which uh, I suppose it it does provide a, a little additional element of suspense but yeah I, I don't know, know if it's, it's uh, like that important some... but we just know that sort of mm. uh, it's we can assume that she spent and Lily spent enough more time with the trio to be mm. to grow close with them um, mm -hmm. and but how close we still don't know and this is the thing like yeah m and it, it doesn't give us more hints about the the nature of that relationship, yeah, right? So the, you know, what I was saying earlier about you know, to what degree is she uh, you know, a fully sentient member of their family, or to what degree is she the the house pet, but with a weird sexual component. Yeah. Um, mm. <laughs> the way you put this, yeah. just put it now, that sounds like a f uh, Fourier. Also, let's just drop this. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> let's let's just drop it but yeah, yeah. I, I do agree it's uh, to be in, in all seriousness there's no really description of what's the situation and it feels hmm. uncertain yeah i think it, it 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 leaves us wondering still about um to what degree the the humans and the oan kali can kind of integrate in the way the oan kali clearly have planned in such a fashion as to retain human autonomy and how or, or how much it'll just be sort of just subsumed, subsumed into the Owen Kali. Well, to be honest, uh, it leaves us guessing. The idea is that, you know, if Don Kali, you know, it's a trade, right? The, the Owen Kali needs to trade for the genetic mm. information and 
whether or not the humans won, this mm-hmm. is gonna what's gonna happen. But I feel like just uh, this is maybe a bit far fetched, but there are three mm-hmm. books in this series, right? Yeah. So we know we cannot. We're almost ninety five percent sure. I am ninety five percent sure that the next section is going to be about the training in the jungle and whatever drama is going to rise from there. And the book is going to end mm-hmm. up with the humans getting ready to go on to, uh, onto the surface of the earth, right? Mm-hmm. Second book, I think yep. what's going to happen is that it's going to be basically some time skip where uh, mm-hmm. finally Lilith and the rest are sort of getting accustomed to what the current earth is right the whole radiation the different uh, different behavior of the species like the normal species they've met that usually are present on the uh, earth are going to be gone or they'll be modified in a way that they can you know they're a bit different right and mm-hmm. there's going to definitely be some sort of tribal let's say uh fighting right like there's going to be some humans okay. that humans that don't want to have to do anything with don kali even though they have nothing to say about it there's going to be the group that live with mm-hmm. don kali and there's going to be a big fight with that but then the question is what's going to be the third book okay. about right because uh in my mind is that okay we have the tribal fight and there's going to be definitely some like big big evil boss let's say antagonist that the level have to fight mm-hmm. against um what's going to happen in the third okay. book like what's yeah. is, like there is going to be another time skip where the hu- like the alien human alien hybrids are going to hybrids are going to be um uh, on the planet so it's just i'm a bit thinking what's what's the the very end game right of the of the story yeah, what's so, the next um the next uh, narrative arc to cover yeah yeah i like the uh, the long term speculations though it's uh, interesting to hear what you think is going to happen in the next books it just feels <laughs> like it's it's sort of bound to happen like this this whole tribal and i'm sure the moment they end up on the earth there's going to be some sort of the mm. anti alien um uh, society and then there's gonna be the pro alien society and there's gonna be the mm. society that basically like the neutral people just like trying to survive and it's, it's just gonna be a lot of uh you know assassination tries of assassination and blah 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 and there's gonna be one of the aliens being killed and there's gonna be human dying because the alien is gonna defend themselves and it's just gonna be all the drama arising Mm-hmm. And how, how do you feel about the the prospects for success for the anti Owen Carly faction? They have no chance. They have no chance because simply all the weapons, all the, unless the unless the Onkali didn't clear the planet enough to remove all the weapons, I'm sure there will be some human that's like, oh, well, actually, there is a, a nuclear bomb hidden in this silo, blah blah blah, at this in this position. Maybe the Onkali haven't found it, and then they find that actually the the thing is still there and still functional and they're gonna be like oh actually kiddos we have this baby waiting for you and uh if you try something silly and then because obviously the aliens are much more um you know we know that Chitaya told her totally that if they wanted they could just poke them and they die right because they have this poison to defend themselves yeah and obviously Liv is much stronger and if there are people around her are going to be much stronger then the, definitely the opposition is not going to be happy unless they have some sort of edge against them so mm-hmm. I'm saying nuclear weapon but because it's the nuclear wasteland but I suspect there's something that there, there definitely be helped uh, uh, anti-alien uh, group that to, to give them that bit of edge fighting or, it, or maybe they'll be like in secret basically okay so yeah Let's see. We still have a lot of chapters to cover before we get to that point. <laughs> yes, quite a lot. Many, many months there. before I can reach that point. So sad. <laughs> yep, uh, it's a, a, a forced slow read for you. Yeah. Man, it's the first time I have to read a book with that pace and it grinds me like there's no tomorrow. Like <laughs> I, After each recording, mm. I'm like, oh my god, I want to read more, and I can't, and I still really... And then I forget during the week because of work, and then I, it comes to the like editing the episode, and then I listen to our recordings, or like um, or do the mm. references, and or we do recording again, it's like the cycle repeats. So <laughs> annoying! <laughs> uh, yep, yeah. I say at some point, like I said, we'll, uh, we'll have to flip this so you can have your revenge, because this... This I think will drive me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I'm prone to binging through stuff if given the opportunity. I'll just you know solidly read the whole lot immediately. You're just then, trying to read uh, as many books as possible, so I cannot find any book that we can cover. So you didn't that you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is my secret plan. <laughs> yeah, read everything before Michael gets the chance to force me to read it slowly. Oh my god, <laughs> I need to find something really like awful, like three thousand chapters. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right and on that note should we anyway, finish I think we've, uh, on this yep I think we've covered yeah. everything for, for this week so yeah. next episode we're gonna we're going to over just one chapter because it's quite long isn't it is that correct yeah 12 um, I believe is, is uh, let me just quickly check I think it's quite long uh, yeah 12 is quite long and then 13 is is uh, very short so we'll just so we may do 12 and 13 and then leave 14 for the next episode uh, is there not 15 episodes or so actually, chapters? Uh, hang on. No, let's do. Uh, nope. 14. 14's the last. Oh, okay, thing. okay. So. Actually, yeah. Uh, no, I think, I think um, if we'll do 13 uh, next. This, we're on. We're on 11. We just finished 11. 11 so we have now, 12, right. 13, yeah, yeah. 14. Yeah, so so we'll, we'll do 12. We'll do 12 next episode and then 13, 14. The final. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Right, everyone. We were Xenothesis. You can find all the places we uh, upload the podcast on xenothesis.com. I was Michael Klinker. I was Rich Jackson. Bye. Bye.